Rub up your engines! Well, here's an interesting one with the stupidity of modern politicians and business. No electric vehicles on the market today in the United States will qualify for the new EV credit. Credits for electric vehicles, right? But they want to make sure the batteries are made at least a certain percentage, 40, 50 percent, in the United States and not depending on China for all these electric batteries, right? Because all the batteries come from overseas and they're not made 40 or 50 percent from American products. Here we go with governments again getting involved in stuff they know nothing about and then just basically screwing everything up making us taxpayers pay for it. They'll spend billions building electric infrastructure that hardly anyone will use. You know you can make laws that say well here's what we're going to do but as it stands at least today in the United States they can't force you to buy something. They can say well we're only going to be able to sell this but they can't force you to go out and buy the stupid thing. Here we go again with moronic politicians. These newly expanded tax credit for electric vehicles won't fit any of the ones that are out today. It's just absurd. They're trying to change that China has a 76 percent of the electric battery market for cars. The United States as it stands only represents 8 percent of the batteries. So they think we'll make a law and that'll fix everything. Well, it might screw everything up because now people might not buy battery electric cars because they won't get the tax credit. So it doesn't matter where they make the stuff if nobody's buying it. Wooden headed politicians are at it again. Well, they've only been out a short time, but Ford is already increasing the price of their Ford F-150 Lightning electric pickup trucks. The cheapest model is being raised $6,000 and the more expensive one is being raised $8,500. I mean that the more expensive one is $97 thousand dollars and that doesn't include their destination fees and stuff so I'm sure you're talking well over a hundred grand for an electric pickup truck that hasn't proven anything yet now it looks to me like Ford is just doing monkey see monkey do they see well Elon and Tesla he keeps raising the price of his people buy him so let's raise the price of ours well guess what Ford you keep raising the price making them even further and further away from the average person sure people want to get them and they'll pay whatever now because there's a bunch of rich people out there I want to get one of my electric pickup trucks from Ford be the first person to have it in my neighborhood blah 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 but if you're trying to sell mass production to people don't keep raising the price you're going to chase away your own customers. It's just greed. I mean, Elon gets away with it. He's got a base of people that seem to be some kind of a mass belief that they believe in the Teslas. I've met these people and they always say, well, we want to support the faith. They actually say things like this and they're talking about electric cars, right? You don't want to just get in a spiral out of control. More and more money you pay for less and less. My advice is don't buy one. They can raise the prices all they want. If nobody buys them, whoop de doo what are they going to do then? In the short run, sure, they'll probably sell them because there's enough people out there that think, oh, I want to get an electric pickup truck, blah, blah, blah. But eventually they'll run out of the rich people and when everybody else is like, hey, that's too expensive, I'm not buying one of them, then what are they going to do? Frito says, which control arm should I buy? I got a Dodge Caravan and I know I can't buy the bushings, but there's all kinds of control arms. What should I order for my Caravan? Standard or heavy duty? Well, if I were you, I'd buy the heavy duty ones. It's a van, it's a heavy vehicle and take my advice. Buy it from a real quality company. Now, of course, the dealer ones are super expensive. You can get aftermarket ones that work perfectly fine. My advice is to stick to good aftermarket companies like Dorman, D-O-R-M-A-N. I've been using them for ages. They make quality parts and it's a bolt-on part. You know, in the old days, my grandfather's day, we used to rebuild them, press new bushings in them, but they're made so you can't really do that anymore. You just replace the whole unit. But that said, these aftermarket companies do a pretty good job. I change a lot of aftermarket parts out. I use Dorman, other quality parts, and they work perfectly fine. You don't have to go to the dealer and buy the super expensive one. But always buy the higher quality one aftermarket that you can because you know it's an important part on your car. You don't want some cheap Chinese knockoff that's you know 29 bucks. If a dealer one is 350 and the one you're looking at is 29, you know there's gonna be a difference in quality there. Brain the matter says I got a 93 Camry with coolant problems. It leaks occasionally. I replaced the radiator and worked for fine. The reservoir bubbles after drive sounds like it's hissing. I do smell burning coolant. What could it be? You say it's bubbling and hissing a little. Pray this fixes your problem. Put a new radiator cap on that new radiator you bought. If the radiator cap's leaking, you'll lose pressure, you'll smell coolant, and you'll lose coolant, right? Now, if it's not that, I got real bad news for you. Your head gasket's starting to blow. So, 
if that's the case, if you think that's the case, watch my video, how to tell if your head gasket is blown Scotty. And you can get a little tester if you don't trust anybody on that from Amazon for 38 bucks. You put the tube in, you pour the blue liquid in, and if the blue turns yellow, you get a blowing head gasket. Now, sometimes you can get a sealer like Bars head gasket sealer. Those auto parts stores sell a decent one for around 30 bucks. Follow directions. Sometimes it'll seal that leak. It's worth a try if that's the case. If that doesn't fix it, then you decide, do I really want to rebuild an engine on a 93 camera or is it time to say goodbye? David Master D says, I got engine compression results. Tell me what it means. Cylinder 1's 125, cylinder 2's 140, cylinder 3's 147, cylinder 4's 155. Okay, well, 1 is 125, 4 is 155. Your engine is just starting to wear out. Now, this is a Toyota. Sometimes they'll run perfectly fine that way for quite some time. If they do, Great, they burn a little oil, great, add a little bit of oil. Just realize that the difference between 155 and 125, you're talking about 30 PSI, and that's plenty enough to show that the engine is worn. But continue changing your oil regularly, being a Toyota, maybe it'll still last for quite some time. Just realize it is worn, it's not gonna last forever, so just baby the thing and see how long it lasts. It's not a vehicle I would take and drive from Tennessee to California and back anymore because the engine's worn, it might go out in the middle of the desert. For a regular night, around car it still might last quite some time. Sin City Center says I printed 3D blend door actuators for my Impala. Got 2011 Impala. The actuators go out every four years with this AC Delco crap. Now these all seem to be Chinese made parts including the aftermarket so I had one printed on my 3D printer and it seems to be not broken at all. I thought maybe you could share this with people. Okay well I have. Not a bad idea and it seems to be lasting longer. That just shows that yes you can make parts better than the cheap junk that they're making. Now realize that stuff's made in China, they're cheap molds, cheap plastic, yeah they're not going to last very long. Now the only problem with a 3D printer, which is one reason that you're probably never going to see 3D printed car parts on normal mainstream cars, because it takes so long to print them that if they made cars that way they wouldn't be able to make enough cars because it takes too many hours to make a part that in an injection molding system takes five seconds. It takes three to five hours right on a 3D printing machine. So they'll probably never make mass produced cars with them, but if you want to make specialized parts yourself, why not? Hey, good idea. Maybe it'll last quite some time. Well, Stellantis North America just said that they're rearranging their executive positions. They got rid of that one woman and put a guy in place of it. The hilarious thing is, this is like rearranging the deck of the Titanic while the ship is sinking, right? One of the big changes, customer experience organizations. Now here's some double speak. Don't build your stuff better. Try to pretend that the the customer experience is what they care about. Not a reliable car that works and gets good gas mods, doesn't strand you, but they want you to have a good customer experience. <laughs> David McDonald is succeeding as the head of customer experience. <laughs> Now, if they actually got real feedback from customer experience, that guy would probably never be able to sleep. He'd have sleepless nights, all the problems they got with Chrysler vehicles, the Lantus vehicles, the junk that Fiat makes that they sell over here, like the, the Jeep Renegade that's just a four wheel drive Fiat, has nothing to do with Jeep, right? But we know how that all works. And if you don't, here's how it works. They hire people, they call up, oh, what's experience like? And they hire, you know, advertising agencies. And when they call people up to see what the experience is, of course, they're being paid to make it look like they're doing a good job. I had a customer with the Stellantis product, and they got called up by one of these surveys, right? And they started talking on the phone. And they said, well, what's your experience? It's horrible. It's a piece of junk. You sold me, blah, blah, blah. They hung up on them. <laughs> well, of course, that's not going to be included in their survey of customer experience, right? So they may be rearranging the decks while the Titanic is sinking, but I don't think it's going to help them out anyway. Maybe they should put it more into actual engineering build quality instead of, oh, let's make all our big trucks down in Mexico so we can save money and make them cheaper and then pretend the customers are having a great experience. Gutch says, my gas pedal shakes. I got an O2 Dodge Intrepid. The car gas pedal shakes. What could be the cost? Your pedal is just telling the computer how much fuel to give to the engine. If the pedal itself is shaking, realize something is wrong in the car that's causing vibrations. If it's your front wheels being out of balance, your steering wheel is going to shake, right? If let's say you got worn motor mounts or broken struts or your tires in the back are out of balance, that'll often make the gas pedal shake because it makes the whole car shake. And on an old 2 like yours, the pedal 
is connected with a cable all the way up to the engine. So the engine's shaking because maybe the motor mounts, transmission mounts are broken. That's it. It's not the front tires because that would make your steering wheel shake. So check motor mounts, check drive shaft joints to see if they're broken. And if you, all that stuff seems okay, check the rear tires because if they're out of balance, that'll make the whole thing shake. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.